there are two kinds of acorn nuts that you can purchase. One kind is a brass plated nut with a sheet metal dome welded to it and the other is a piece of brass that has the entire acorn nut shape machined out of it. You can tell the difference by looking at the edge and you can actually see there's a, a very slight lip there well, where the uh, metal is welded to the nut. You can also look in and see that there's a much larger cavity and that the, the hole in there is a lot deeper than the acorn nut that's machined completely out of brass. You can actually even see a point in there where it was machined out. The kind with the metal cap welded to the nut, these aren't any good for making hot end nozzles. Basically just because the metal here is just way too thin and by the time you try to shape up the tip of it, you end up cutting a big hole in the tip of the nozzle, so that just doesn't work. These other ones that are machined completely out of brass, there's a lot more material up here, so you've got a lot more room to play in, so to speak, where you can machine a nice tip. So the, the ones that I found at Lowe's a hardware store here in the United States are the ones with the sheet metal dome welded to the nut. So unfortunately I had to order these other ones from an online hardware store, uh, McMaster Car, and these work really, really well. These are the tools that I use to make the hot end tips. You can see I've got a TV tray here with my hand drill clamped to it to hold that stationary. On the hand drill I've got a zip tie to uh, slip over the button on the hand drill to turn that on so that for hands-free operation there. I also have my Dremel tool that I use to shape up the shape up the tip. I also have a couple of different varieties of drill bits. You can either get these where the shank size is the same as the drill bit diameter. I've got a couple of different sizes of those. Something else I found at a uh, local hardware store here called Harbor Freight is a little set of very, very tiny drill bits with larger shank sizes on them. The box at Harbor Freight said that these went down to a third of an inch, but when you actually open up the kit, you do find a 0.25 millimeter drill bit in there, which I used for a while, but I'm actually going to make the nozzle for this video out of the one with the ridiculously small shank size and, and show you a trick for that. So we're going to make a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. I've got a few parts that I printed on the printer. This is kind of a homemade chuck that holds that drill bit uh, once you tighten that down and then the hand drill can clamp onto that. I also have some other parts. This part here is what I use to actually kind of make a mini lathe. Uh, this print kind of looks pretty bad but it gets the job done. Uh, I have these metal spacers that I purchased at Lowe's that I put in the end here for a nice sturdy bearing surface for a 5 inch quarter 20 screw that I put the acorn nut that I'm machining here on the tip of it and then the hand drill turns this to rotate the acorn nut then I just clamp this to the table. After I use the hand drill to turn that and shape the nut I've got this other tool that I made put the small drill bit in the hand drill, turn that on, and then I put the acorn nut here on this other part, and then this lets me very, very slowly feed the acorn nut onto the drill bit so that I can get a hole without breaking the drill bit. Various clamps and pieces of wood for shimming up the tools, and also safety goggles. The directions that everything turns, this is going to spit some material straight back at your face, so you definitely want to have some safety goggles. So the first step to making a nozzle is you have to shape the tip of the acorn nut to a kind of a, a point with a flat on the top of it. Uh, the flat's where the hole's going to go, but you want a nice point on the nozzle so that the surface area that could potentially be dragging across your print or across your print bed is as small as possible. This takes some practice to do. There are some other tricks that you can do, and I'll talk about those here in a little bit. As far as the setup to do this, I've got a shim that 
and clamp that are kind of holding this hand drill in place. In the hand drill, I've got a, a, a hex to socket adapter in here, driving a looks like a 7 16 inch socket, which is the same as the head on the 5 inch screw. That's the kind of the drive shaft for my little homemade lathe here. Here you see I've got the the 3D printed tool held in place with a clamp and raised up with a piece of wood. Probably should have printed this a little bit taller, but I happen to have a piece of wood that was the exact right size to hold this up, so I never bothered. But you may want to add some height onto the bottom of this so that everything is lined up horizontally with the axis of your drill. In here, on the tip, you see the acorn nut. So when you're actually shaping the tip of the acorn nut, you'll want to notice that rotating the acorn nut counterclockwise loosens it and it'll actually come off of the, the tip of the screw. Turning it clockwise tightens it. So what you want to do as you machine it, you want to put downward pressure on the right side of the acorn nut and you want to make sure that as the drill rotates it, the drill is going to rotate the acorn nut counterclockwise. This is going to basically force the acorn nut to get tighter and tighter as we change the shape of it. When you're changing the shape of the tip of the nozzle with the Dremel tool, you're going to want to pay attention to the direction that the Dremel tool turns in. In my case, when it's turned on, the Dremel tool is going to turn clockwise here. So I want to make sure again that I'm putting downward pressure on this side. So I'm going to try to have the right hand side of the cutting wheel hitting the right hand side of the acorn nut as I shape this to a point. So as I shape the tip of the acorn nut to a, a point, this is something you're going to have to pretty much practice with on a few of these. Go ahead and buy a few from McMaster when you order them because you're going to destroy some. If you take away too much material, you're actually going to cut through the, the cap of the acorn nut itself. It's a lot worse on the ones that are just the little sheet metal dome. But these you can actually shape quite a bit, but the first few that, until you figure out exactly how deep you can go, you're going to basically cut the top of the acorn nut and have a quarter inch hole in the tip of your acorn nut so that won't do you any good. So buy a few of these and kind of get a feel for how much of the material that you can take away before you destroy the, the acorn nut. Also if you take away too much material the walls could be pretty thin it could look okay and then when you go to tighten it down on the hot end of your printer bot the, the tip could break off. So it's kind of a trial and error sort of thing especially when you're using hand tools like this. Obviously if you have some NC controlled uh, machinery that you can do the machining with. You'll be a lot better off, but for those of us making this stuff in our garage, a little trial and error is going to be what it's going to take. Also, as we do this, don't forget to put on your safety goggles. Okay, so a good hot end tip is going to be tapered into a cone towards the tip here. And there's going to be just a very, very small flat area at the tip of the hot end. And that's what we've got to hit with our very, very small drill bit so that we can get a really good hot end tip. The next step is actually putting the hole in the tip of the nozzle. And surprisingly, that's probably the easier of the two steps. What I've made is a little miniature chuck that I was able to print on the printer. The shank size of the 0.2 millimeter drill bit that I purchased, I purchased the one I didn't mean to buy, but I have it now. So the, the shank size of that drill bit is actually the same diameter as the hole size, so it's 0.2 millimeters. So you have to come up with something that can hold 0.2 millimeters and turn it. Unfortunately, a hand drill isn't going to do that unless you have a, a little miniature chuck adapter that you purchase at the same sort of time. So I just went ahead and tried to make my own and it work, actually works pretty well. It's four parts uh, minus the hardware. These two pieces that form a clamp that compress these two pieces and when you print it there is a little groove inside here that you lay the drill bit in and then you clamp the drill bit in between that, slide this on and tighten it down and that holds the drill bit in place. You may have to wet sand the insides of these pieces a little bit to get a good nice tight fit around your drill bit. That's what I had to do on these. I think the, the hole was just a, a little bit too big for the drill bit after I got the part printed. But that's how that goes together. 
So as you can see, a 0.2 millimeter drill bit is exceedingly small, about the size of a hair. Uh, so it will break very, very easily if you put any sort of side-to-side -side motion on that drill bit. So when you put this together, you want as little of the tip of the bit sticking out as possible but still just enough to go through the tip of the nozzle. So this may take a little bit of trial and error. You know, maybe something like an eighth of an inch or so is a good place to start. As you press the nut onto the tip of the drill bit, if you notice it start to wobble at all as you uh, press the nut, back the nut off, and do something different or else you're going to break your drill bit. All right, so once the drill bit and the chuck are put together. Your drill bit should be sticking out just a little bit out beyond the tip of the chuck. This is the part back here that the drill is going to grab onto and turn. And keeping this distance short here reduces the amount that this drill bit is going to flex, hopefully reducing the chance that uh, the drill bit can break. So let's go ahead and put this together and show you how it works. This next step is the, the trickiest of all the steps. What you want to do is make sure that as the drill bit is rotated by the hand drill that the tip of the drill bit doesn't wobble, doesn't spin in a cylinder, but actually spins on an axis as straight and as steady as you can get. You'll probably have to play with the tightness of your drill chuck. You may have to take this out, take it apart, reseat the drill bit inside the uh, the two halves of the of the hex piece that holds it in place. You may even have to reprint this part and re-sand a few times to, to make this work. Take your time at this step. It's absolutely necessary to keep from breaking your bit and it'll be worth it because that makes the next step very, very easy. You'll notice on the tool that I made that actually feeds the acorn nut onto the drill bit, I've drilled out a little bit of the tip of the screw here. This way, if the drill bit goes through the acorn nut, I'm not actually drilling into this screw as well, so this provides some clearance on the inside of the acorn nut for the, the drill bit to move freely once it's through the acorn nut. That way it'll be very visible as the drill bit breaks through the acorn nut, and you'll know that the operation's finished. So the way this tool works is I turn the wheel, and it moves the acorn nut forward and backward on an axis. And what is absolutely critical is that you get the tip of the drill bit very precisely lined up with the very small flat surface that you put in the tip of the acorn nut with the Dremel tool. And you also want to make sure that the drill bit lines up with that tip in an axis. And you'll want to check this from this side, from the top, from the back side and all the way around to make sure that from every angle it looks like the drill bit is pointed directly at the tip of the nozzle. That way when we start the drill and feed the acorn nut onto the drill bit the hole goes through really quick and you're done. You may find that the hand drill itself is either pointed downward or pointed upward depending on how you've got it fixtured. Uh, what you can use are some pieces of wood shim stock and use a hammer to very gently tap these underneath of the drill, either the front or the back, to help you adjust the height and the angle of the clamped drill. If you hold the acorn nut up to the light, you'll be able to see a single pinhole through it, and you shouldn't see any more than a single pinhole, or else you'll have plastic oozing out of multiple places on your acorn nut, and that usually means that you just uh, took off too much material when you were shaping the tip into a cone, but as long as you only see a single pinhole in there up against the light, got a, a clean hole through your nozzle.